Now we start reading. So, Archana, did today you will start reading? Yes, Rangar. Okay. This power of exclusive concentration. Six zero nine. Yes, Rangar. I've got it. Go ahead. Power. This power of exclusive concentration is not confined to absorption in a particular character or type of working of one's larger self, but extends to a complete self of forgetfulness in the particular action in which we happen at the moment to be engaged. The actor in moments of great intensity forgets that he is an actor and becomes the part that he is playing on the stage. Not that he really thinks himself Rama or Ravana, but that he identifies himself for the time being with the form of character or action which the name represents and so completely and so completely as to forget the real man who is playing it. So the poet forgets himself, the man, the worker in his work, and is for the moment only the inspired impersonal energy which works itself out in formation of word and rhythm of all else he is oblivious. The, the soldier forgets himself in the act and becomes the charge and the fury and the slaying. In the same way, the man who is overcome by intense anger forgets himself at, as it is commonly said, or as it has been still more aptly and forcibly put, becomes anger. And these terms express a real truth, which is not the whole truth of the man's being at the time, but a practical fact of the conscious energy in action. He does forget himself, forgets all the rest of himself with its other impulses and powers of self-restraint and self-direction, so that he acts simply as the energy of the passion which preoccupies him, because that energy for the time being becomes that energy for the time being. This is as far as this is as far as self-forgetfulness can go in the normal active human psychology, for it must return to the wider self-aware consciousness of which self-forgetfulness is only a temporary movement. Yeah. Okay. We are explaining further and we are explaining very interestingly. Now he is bringing in the, <coughs> we will discuss this in detail because you have to understand and the image he is using of the actor on the stage is there in the Advaita philosophy. Okay? Shankara's philosophy also has it in great detail. So, we are the soul. But when we are in the physical world, it's a stage on which we are acting our part. And what is the part we are playing? We are identifying ourselves with body, mind and life, which is not the soul. Okay. Now, if you compare this with an actor on the stage, the actor is, let us say, his name is Suman. Let us say his name is Suman. Now, Suman is playing either Rama or Ravana on the stage. He forgets that he is Suman and he is playing the part of Rama, identifying himself completely with Ravana or Rama. Okay? And when the play ends, he becomes again Suman. So what is the play? The play is the life in the physical world. When the Suman, who is a soul, comes down into the physical world, he starts playing the part of Rama or Ravana on the stage. So, so long as he is there in the stage, he will think himself to be the body, mind, life, which is the Ravana or the Rama. Okay? And as soon as his death and his death comes, that is at the end of the drama, his soul realizes that, oh, I am Suman, I am not Rama or Ravana anymore. This is the impression he is giving. But it's a very interesting comparison. Because you can understand what is exclusive concentration. The only difference is that in the physical world, when we are concentrating, the image I gave you is a spiritual exclusive concentration. The whole life, we are exclusively concentrating on the body mind life. The, <clears throat> but there is another one in the physical world, pragmatic, what is it called, which is the forgetfulness of what we know. We know, as I said, that I have a, a home at number so and so, I have a wife, I have children, okay, I am a motor mechanic. You forget all these things and you start doing so. The exclusive concentration of the normal man is temporary, but the exclusive concentration of the spiritual phenomenon that is almost permanent for the whole life. 
for a normal man. But you can recover your memory of your being a soul through yoga. But it takes a long time. Whereas in the normal physical world, you recover your total personality, okay, including all everywhere, whatever you had, brothers, sisters, mother, father, wife, everything you remember quite easily. Okay, so there is a comparison that he is making. He spoke about this in the earlier paragraph, and now he is saying this. So in other words, ignorance is nothing but forgetting who you are. But this forgetting can be, is not permanent. Normally for a human being, it's permanent for a, one particular life, he is a very ordinary person. But if he is already a developed person, he can recover the memory of his soul, okay, and his self, and through the process of yoga. But it's much more difficult. This is the comparison he is making. I hope it is clear because this is very often this image is used for explaining the Advaita ignorance. Now, this power, I am reading each sentence. This power of exclusive concentration, remember, is not confined to the absorption in a particular character or type of working of one's larger self but extends to a complete self forgetfulness in the particular action in which we happen at the moment to be engaged. Okay, so the moment, the moment he's talking about is I am repairing either a computer or I am repairing my motorcycle. So complete forgetfulness of the other things that we have. Complete, you are completely fo focusing here. This image, if you take to the spiritual level of consciousness, then that complete forgetfulness occurs for the whole life. Okay? The whole time. It's not temporary. So that's why we are saying this power of exclusive concentration is not confined to absorption in a particular character of type of working of one's larger self, but extends to a complete self-forgetfulness in the particular action in which we happen at the moment to be engaged. Very clearly. He's speaking of both. Okay? Now, the Phenomena of the forgetfulness. The actor in moments of great intensity forgets that he is an actor and becomes the part that he is playing on the stage. Not that he really thinks himself to be Rama or Ravana, but that he identifies himself for the time being with the form of character and action which the name represents. So, in other words, form and character. Form and character of your body mind life. You are identifying yourself with a form. This is me. You recognize yourself through pictures of your body, okay? of character and action, which the name represents. Name, Nama Rupa. He is going back to form and name. Okay? So, represents and so completely and so completely as to forget the real man who is playing it. So, the poet forgets himself, the man, the worker in his work, and is for the moment only the inspired, impersonal energy which works itself out in formation of word and rhythm. He is speaking of the poet. When the poet is getting inspiration, he doesn't remember his name, he doesn't remember where he is working, he doesn't remember anything. He is completely identified with the inspiration coming in. He is giving another image which is very similar to the image of the actor. Okay. And word and rhythm. Word and rhythm. Word is poetry and rhythm is music. Okay. So this is in his uh, describing the poet who engages in creative poetry. Of all else, he is oblivious. Obviously, he is completely forgets, focusing on his poem. The soldier forgets himself with the act and becomes a charge and a fury and a slave. He doesn't remember even his name at that time. Okay. In the middle of his action, if you ask him what's your name, he'll have to focus and he'll get for puzzled even. He doesn't remember at all anything except the charge and fury and the slave. In the same way, the man who is overcome by intense anger forgets himself as it is commonly said or as it is as it has been still more aptly and forcefully put, becomes anger. 
we have the spiritual uh, experience, we have become the body man life. We have become man life. And these terms express a real truth, which is not the whole truth of man's being anything. These images that he has given, they are absolutely true, but it's only temporarily true in the physical world. And these terms express a real truth, which is not the whole truth of man's being at the time. But a practical factor is conscious energy in action. He does forget himself, forgets all the rest of himself, with all its other impulses and powers of self-restraint. He's getting angry, so his self-restraint also is forgotten, that he has the power and self-direction, so that he acts simply as an energy of the passion which preoccupies him, becomes the energy for the time being. This is as far as self-forgetfulness can go in the normal active human psychology. Okay? For it must return soon to the wider self aware consciousness of which this self-forgetfulness is only a temporary mode. Very clear what he's saying. This is a phenomenon of ignorance. Okay. And he's comparing it to our en being engaged in something which he used the word concentration, exclusive concentration. So, this is the, Im Im the, the, the truth of ignorance. Ignorance is nothing. Okay, ignorance is nothing but. Self forgetfulness of who we really are. Okay. My Skype is not working, just one minute. Okay. I'll, I'll close the program and restart. Eh? Just give me two minutes. We, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear. Yeah, but I show okay, but the image, yeah, the image got stuck. Just one second. There was an interference with a uh, okay, join call. You can hear me, no? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, you can hear me also. So? Good morning, everyone. Yeah, you can hear me now, no? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, yes, yes. Very weak. There is a lot of disturbance from one particular area. I don't know from there. So you you can hear me, na? Yes, no, I... yes, sir. yes, sir, Angata. We can hear you. Okay. In that case, shall we go to the next para? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, Sunki, maybe you can read. Yes, I will read. Okay. But in the larger universal consciousness. But in the larger universal consciousness, there must be a power of carrying this movement to its absolute point, to the greatest extreme possible for any relative movement to reach. And this point is reached not in human unconsciousness, which is not abiding and always refers back to the back to the awakened conscious, conscious being that man normally and characteristically is but in the inconscience of material nature. This inconscience is no more real than the ignorance of exclusive concentration in our temporary being, which limits the waking consciousness of man. For as in us, so in the atom, the mental, the plant, in every form of material nature, in every energy of material nature, there is, we know, a secret soul, a secret will, a secret intelligence at work, other than the mute self-oblivious form, 
the conscient, the conscient even in unconscious things of the Upanishad, without whose presence and informing conscious force or tapas, no work of nature could be done. What is it in conscient there is the property, the formal, the motional action of the energy absorbed in the working, identified with it to such an extent as to be bound in a sort of a trance or swoon of concentration, unable to go back while imprisoned in, imprisoned in that form to its real self, uh, to its real self, to the integral conscious being and the integral force of a conscious being which it has put behind it, of which in its ecstatic trance of mere working and energy, it has become oblivious. Prakriti, the executive force, becomes unaware of Purusha, the conscious being, holds him within, holds him hidden within herself, and becomes again slowly aware only with the only with the emergence of consciousness from this swoon of the inconscience. Purusha, indeed, consents to assume the apparent form of itself, which Prakriti constructs for it. It seems to become the inconscient, the physical being, the vital being, the mental being. But in all these, it remains still in reality itself. The light of the secret conscious being supports and informs the action of the inconscient or, immersingly, conscious energy of nature. Okay, so he is going one step now, even more. So what he is saying is that this phenomena of forgetfulness in the physical world, which is easily recoverable, okay, you have to extend it to the, in the spiritual plane, it becomes absolute. Okay, it becomes much, much, much larger. In the physical world, it is temporary. If for one hour I am concentrating on my, the work, I have forgotten who I am. But after that one hour, I can recover my true being very easily. I, recover, I remember that I am Suman and I am not the motor mechanic or whatever. Okay, so. But now he is saying that this phenomenon of forgetfulness, if you carry it into the larger universal consciousness, there it becomes ignorance and it is much more difficult to recover your true being. Okay? So this basically has gone very systematically one by one. And explain this. So I'll read each sentence. But in the larger universal consciousness, there must be a power of carrying this movement to its absolute point. So in the physical world, one hour I've forgotten who I am. I've forgotten that I am so much. But in the larger universal consciousness in spiritual planes, this one hour becomes a full lifetime. That's what he said. Okay, so it's clear. That is ignorance. He is explaining further. You have understood what I am saying, now. Nah? It's very interesting. That one hour of ignorance in the physical world of who I am, I am Suman, I have forgotten. Now that one hour becomes a whole lifetime. You have forgotten who you are. And who are you? Suman. But Suman is the soul. You have forgotten that you are the soul. And this soul is also playing the game. It says, okay, I agree that I am the body-mind life. Okay, that's what he's saying. So it's with the soul's consent that you forget who you are. And why do you do that? Because you have great experience in the world. The soul is not yet divine. Soul is essentially divine. But it has to grow. It has to become divine. And how can it do that? Without experience, it's not possible. We know everywhere. They, they, even in a student, when five years of uh, accountancy he has done, he has to have a period of internship. It's exactly the same with the doctors. After you've done your five-year course, you are not a full-fledged doctor yet. You have to do your internship. Okay? So that's what happens with all the various lives that you have. You are being trained to understand who you really are. Okay? Exactly in the same way, this is what has been said. So you have, the soul agrees to the experience of identification with the body and life tacitly. It's not agreeing very enthusiastically, but tacitly it agrees. Implied way. And then it goes on developing until it realizes that 
they should not the reality and it gets back to its form okay so this is what he said in the larger universal consciousness there must be a power of carrying this movement which is a movement movement of forgetting yourself who you are for an hour okay to its absolute point the one hour becomes a full lifetime to the greatest extreme possible for any relative movement to reach it becomes the move forgetfulness becomes so much that no relative movement can reach it it becomes absolute okay and this point is reached not in human unconsciousness which is not abiding and always refers back to the awakened conscious being that man normally and characteristically is but in the inconscious of material nature the comparison is complete so you forget who you are and the forgetfulness takes you into the inconscious of material nature you become body mind like this inconscious is no more real than the ignorance of exclusive concentration in our temporary being which limits the waking consciousness of man or as in us so in the item the metal the plant in every form of material nature in every energy of material nature there is we know a secret soul a secret will a secret intelligence at work rather than the new self oblivious form the conscient okay conscient even in unconscious sense of the upanishad this upanishad he is referring to the katha upanishad chetanas achetarana the conscient in the can conscious okay this is the katha upanishad <coughs> So, without whose presence and informing conscious force at all, no work of nature could be done. So, you identify yourself fully with the nature, with the prakriti, and you have forgotten that you are the purusha. And the purusha is agreed, as I said, because it needs experience for growth. Okay. So, what is in conscience there is a prakriti, the formal, and for you can. Replace the prakriti by body mind life. Okay, what is inconscient there is the prakriti, the formal. The word formal is an adjective of form. Okay, you you identify yourself with your form. Nama rupa. The emotional action of the energy absorbed in the working, identified with it to such an extent as to be bound in a sort of trance or swoon of concentration. Soon, unconsciousness. Sorry, the becoming unconscious is soon. Unable to go back. Now, what you were able to go back very easily to your true self, you can become soon, but here you can't. Okay, you are unable to go back. A sort of trance or soon of uh, concentration, unable to go back, while imprisoned in that form. Your soul is imprisoned in the body mind, and it has to regain its freedom. To its real self, to the integral conscious being, and the integral force of conscious being, which it has put behind it, of which in its ecstatic trance of mere working, okay, be very interesting. What he's saying? He's saying even in the there is an ecstatic trance of mere working and energy, it has become oblivious, okay, of which in its ecstatic trance of mere working and energy, it has become oblivious. They become oblivious of the ecstatic trance. Okay, so they have forgotten who you are. Prakriti, the body-mind life. Okay. Now here extended from the individual to the universal. Okay. Basically, it's the same thing. Prakriti, the executive force, becomes unaware of Purusha, the conscious being, holds him hidden within herself, and becomes again slowly aware only. With the emergence of consciousness from the swoon of unconscious, so the emergence of consciousness through many many lives, you start becoming realizing that you are the soul, you are the purusha, and not the prakriti. It's a slow emergence. Whereas in the physical world, the emergence is not slow at all. After one hour, finish. You can immediately get back. But here in the spiritual plane of consciousness, 
it's a very slow process of realizing who you are. Okay? Within yourself and becomes a rest. Again, slow, slowly, aware only with the emergence of consciousness from a swoon of inconscience. Purusha, indeed, consents to assume the apparent form of itself, which Prakriti constructs for it. So he is passively, passively agreeing to even all the works that Prakriti is doing. Why? Because of experience. It needs experience. Or which Prakriti constructs for it. Prakriti is constructing what? Your body mind life. Okay? It seems to become the inconscient, the physical being, the vital being, the mental being. But in all these, it remains still in reality itself. The light of the secret conscious being supports and informs, informs, goes into the form, the action of the inconscient or emergingly conscious energy of nature. Very interesting what he said. Okay, so now he, he has explained in great detail the phenomenon of forgetfulness in the normal world. He is comparing that with the spiritual experience of the forgetfulness. He is explaining ignorance. Okay, I think it's quite clear now. Huh? I hope so at least. <laughs> So, we can read the next one also. Inconscience is superficial. So, um, so uh, Archanadi has read and Sunki has read. So, now one more somebody has to read. Shilpa or Kiran? Yes. Shilpa can read. Shilpa, go ahead. Yes. The inconscience. the inconscience is superficial like the ignorance of the waking human mind or the inconscience or subconscious of a sleeping mind. And within it is the all conscient. It is entirely phenomenal, but it is complete phenomenal. Phenomenon. So complete is it that it is only by an impulsion or evolutionary consciousness emerging into other forms less imprisoned by this inconscient method of working, that it can come back to itself, recover in the animal a partial awareness, then in man at his highest some possibility of approach to a first more complete, though still superficial, initiation of a truly conscious working. But still, as in the case of the superficial and the real man, where there is also a similar, though lesser in inability, the difference is phenomenal only. Essentially, in the universal order of things, the inconscience of material nature is the same exclusive concentration, the same absorption in the work and the energy as in the self-limitation of the waking human mind or the concentration of the self-forgetting mind in its working. It is only that self-limitation carried to a farthest point of self-forgetfulness which becomes not a temporary action, but the law of its action. Nescience in nature is the complete self-ignorance. The partial knowledge and general ignorance of a man is a partial self-ignorance, marking in her evolutionary order a return towards self-knowledge. But both are and all ignorance is when examine, examine a superficially exclusive self forgetful concentration of tapas, of the conscious energy, of being in a particular line or section of its movement, of which alone it is aware, or which alone it seems to be on the surface. The ignorance is effective within the bounds of that movement and valid for its purpose. But phenomenal, partial, superficial, not essentially, really not integral. We have to use the word, re word real necessarily in a quite limited and not in its absolute sense, for the ignorance is real enough, but it is not the whole truth of our being, and by regarding it by itself, even its truth is misrepresented to our outer awareness. In that true truth of itself, it is an involved consciousness and knowledge evolving back to its itself, but 
it is dynamically effective as an inconscience and an and an ignorance. Okay, so okay, explain more in detail what you said. So what we'll do, we have only about five minutes, four or five minutes. So we will summarize. Okay. See, also summary of page eight. Also. We will summarize what he said in this paragraph. Okay. So this is the eleventh paragraph of the chapter. <coughs> there is, there are two things. Okay. There is one. The inconscience of the individual in the normal man. Okay. And this has got two aspects. The first is the shallow self oblivion. <laughs> the shallow self oblivion is a one hour of working at something and forgetting who you are. That's a shallow self. But there's also in the inconscience of the individual a deep self oblivion. The deep self oblivion. Too. So, the first one in which he forgets father, house, car, to concentrate on the task at hand. He forgets all his own father, his own house, his car, and he concentrates on the task at hand. He is a shallow self oblivion. He can recover easily the forgotten things. This is shallow and he can recover very easily. But now there is a the deep self oblivion. The deep self oblivion in which he sees the one and seems to forget the many. Okay? But this is not ignorance. Secondly, there is an inconscience of universal nature in which recovery of forgotten things is not easy. Okay? In the divine presence is there in the stone, but the divine presence cannot assert itself. It has become the stone. The stone cannot become conscious of what the reality is within it. It's not easy. It has to recover them by slow, long effort of evolutionary development through many stages. And those stages are, first of all, plant, then insect, then animal, then ordinary man, then spiritual man, then the yogi. So these are the steps by which you can recover the second exclusive concentration. All these states are really only a self-forgetfulness. The process is the same in all. But in universal nature, the phenomenon of self-forgetfulness has gone so far that recovery is almost impossible. A slow evolution is the only solution. This disability in universal nature is complete. The disability in the individual is temporary and recovery is easy. It's a minor disability. In all cases, ignorance is a self-will and self-executed forgetfulness. This is not a real permanent ignorance because in all things, animate or inanimate, there is a secret consciousness inherent. This is the Katha Upanishads, Chetana, Achetana, Anna. This is what said in the second paragraph. So, we have come to 8.40. So, we did three paras today. We are explaining the whole thing in a very, very clear manner. The exclusion of concentration is taking two cases. One, the universal and one, the individual. In the individual, you forget what you are doing temporarily. And you can easily get back your true being. I am Suman and I live in such a place. I have a father, I have a car. Okay? But in the spiritual plane of consciousness, the soul forgets that it is a, it is a real being. And it identifies itself with the body-mind life. In the so this is the ignorance. In the one, it's very difficult to recover. In the shallow phenomenon or in the physical world, ignorance is very easily got rid of. That's what she is Okay? He's comparing the The comparison gives us a very good idea of what it is. Okay? So, we stop today at this point.
in Shantiya Sarvakam that we have to do an aspara. This being, this being the root nature of the ignorance. Okay? Yes, I make a note. Thank you. Thank you, Rangadha. Thank you, Rangadha.